political laws are applied primarily to government officials, candidates, advocacy groups, lobbyists, businesses, non-profit organizations, and trade unions. Political law comprises election law, voting rights law, campaign finance law, laws governing lobbying and lobbyists, open government laws, legislative and executive branch ethics codes, legislative procedure, administrative procedure, constitutional law, and legislative and regulatory drafting. Now that we define political law, let me tell you the scope of political law. The first one is law of public administration. It, it deals with the organization and management of the different branches of the government. Law of public administration also helps in making laws which can be detrimental to political and social values, including democracy, fairness, and efficiency. The second one is constitutional law. It is deals with the grantees of the constitution to individual rights and the limitation on government action. Constitutional law is the most important because it is a fundamental law of the land and it safeguards the rights of the people in the country. Administrative law deals with the exercise of executive power in the making of rules and the decision of questions affecting private rights. Is the body of law created by the agencies and department of the government which carry out the laws passed by Congress or state legislature. When Congress passes a law on a complicated issue, Congress often needs help determining all the details of how the law will be enforced and implemented. Administrative agencies and government departments fill in those gaps for Congress and pass additional rules and regulations to achieve Congress's goals. The Law of Public Corporations deals with governmental agencies for local government or for other special purposes. In order to carry out the services and missions, public corporations provide services or participate in activities similar to that of private enterprises. To ensure success, public corporations are granted operational flexibility while retaining the principle of fundamental public policy and public accountability. A public corporation's board of directors is appointed by the sitting governor while the Senate confirms said that appointment. However, the board of directors has the authority to manage the public corporation's operations and set policy as they see fit. As we delve into the political law, let's talk about the Constitution. The Constitution is a very important instrument in the state. It is the acknowledged regulation set by the state to maintain the peace and order in a society. Without this, there will be no order in the state, the sovereign power will deteriorate, and the government will not be able to function well. The Constitution is based on principles that help the government by sovereignty. It sets limits so that the people will know what government can do and cannot do. Did you know that for every change in the Constitution of the Philippines, the President released a proclamation to commemorate the day, and that called is Constitution Day. Former President Corazon C. Aquino drew Proclamation No. 211 of 1988 assigned February 2 of each year as Constitution Day to mark the new 1987's Constitution that we are still using today. But before we have the 1987 Constitution, we had several Constitutions started from 1899 Malolos Constitution approved by the Malolos Congress and the former president, the promulgated by the former president Emilio Aguinaldo on January 21, 1899. Next is the 1935 Constitution as approved by the 1934 Constitutional Convention on February 8, 1935, certified by the President of the United States on March 25, 1935, and ratified by Previous site on May 14, 1935. Let's all go to the next one. The 1943 Constitution is approved by the Preparatory Committee on Philippine Independence, September 4, 1943, and ratified by the Kalibapi Convention. The 1943 Constitution was the first 
constitution of the Japanese-sponsored Second Republic of the Philippines. It was recognized as legitimate and binding only in Japanese-controlled areas of the Philippines, but was ignored by the United States government and the Philippine Commonwealth government in exile. Next, the 1973 Constitution Draft presented to former President Marcos by the 1975 Constitutional Convention on December 1, 1972, deemed ratified by citizens' assemblies held from January 10 to 15, 1973, proclaimed in force by proclamation by President Marcos January 17, 1973. Now the present Constitution, the 1987 Constitution, approved by the 1986 Constitutional Commission on October 12, 1986, the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines was presented to President Corazon C. Aquino on October 15, 1986. It was ratified on February 2, 1987 by the plebiscite. It was proclaimed in force on February 11, 1987. Article number 1. National Territory The National Territory comprises the Philippines Archipelago with all the island and water embraced therein, and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction, consisting of its terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial domains, including the territorial sea and other submarine areas. Article number 2. Declaration of Principles and Policies It is the statement of the basic ideological principles and policies that underlie the Constitution. Article number 3. Bill of Rights it establishes the relationship of the individual to the state and defines the right of the individual by limiting the lawful powers of the state. Article number 5. Suffrage. A member of democratic community who enjoys full civil and political rights and is accorded protection inside and outside the territory of the country. Article number 4. Citizenship. Natural born citizens are those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their Philippine citizenship. Those who elect Philippine citizenship in accordance with paragraph section 1 here shall be deemed natural born citizens. Article number 6 Legislative Department Legislative Department or legislative power is essentially the authority of the government to enact laws, repeal, or amount them as well. Article number 7 Executive Department Executive power on the President of the Philippines. The President is the head of state and the head of government and function as the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Philippines. Article number 8 Judicial Department. Judicial power includes the duty of the courts of justice to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable and to determine whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack of access of judication of the part of any branch or instrumentally of the court. Article number 9. Constitutional Commission. The Commission on Election shall exercise the following powers and functions. Enforce and administer all laws and regulations relative to the conduct of an elections, the deficit, initiative, and referendum and recall. Article number 10. Local Government. Grants is local government unit the power to create its own sources of revenue and to levy taxes, but this power is subject to such guidelines and limitations as the Congress may provide. Article number 11. Accountability of public officers. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people, serve them with, without responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency, act with patrioticism, and justice and lead modest lives. Article number 12. National Economy and Patrimony. In the grant of rights, privilege, and concessions of covering the national economy and patrimony, the state shall give preference to qualified Filipinos. The state shall re regulate and exercise authority over foreign investments within its national jurisdiction and in accordance with its national goals and priorities. Article number 13. Social Justice and Human Rights The Congress shall give highest priority to the enactment of measures that protect and enhance the right of all people to the human dignity, reduce social, economic, and political inequalities and remove cultural inequalities by equitably diffusing wealth and political power for the common good. Article 14 Education, Science, Technology, Arts, Culture, and Sports 
the country shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. Article number 15, the family. The state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. Accordingly, it shall strengthen its solidarity and actively promote its total development. The family has the duty to take care of its elderly, but the state may also do so through just programs of social security. Article number 16, General Provisions. The state shall protect and advance the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology in accord with rhythm and harmony ratio. Article number 17, Amendments or Revisions. The resolution states that any amendment to or revision of the Constitution may be proposed by the Congress upon a vote of the three-fourths of all its members for a constitutional convention. Article number 18, Transitory Provisions. The first local election shall be held on a date to be determined by the President, which may be simultaneous with the election of the members of the Congress it shall include the election of all members of the city or municipal councils in the metropolitan Manila area. The 1987 constitution established a representative democracy with power divided among three separate and independent branches of the government, the executive, a bicameral legislature, and the judiciary. And for the executive branch, the executive branch is headed by the president and his appointed cabinet. The president is the head of the state and the chief executive, but he is also the subject to significant checks from the other branches, especially in times of emergency. The president is elected by the popular vote a term of six years. The president then appoints and may dismiss his or her cabinet members whom he or she presides over. The cabinet consists of the president advisors and head of the departments. It is appointed by the president and it assists him to his governance functions. The president may no longer run for re-election unless he or she becomes president through constitutional succession and has served for no more than four years as a president. The legislative branch is authorized to make laws, alter, and repeal them through the power vested in the Philippine Congress, which is divided into two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The 24 members of the Senate are elected at large by a popular vote and can serve no more than two consecutive six-year terms. The House of Representatives is composed of about 250 members elected from legislative districts in the provinces, cities, and municipalities and representatives elected through a party list system of registered national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations. Mainly, the legislative branch deals with making, deliberating, enactment, amending, and repealing of the laws. They may override the veto of the president, revoke proclamation, and has a power to impeach the president and the members of the Supreme Court. Republic Act No. 9593, Tourism Act of 2009, enacted by former President Gloria Arroyo in Cebu City on May 12, 2009. This is Senate Bill No. 2213 and House Bill No. 5229, sponsored by former Senator Richard Gordon. Judicial Branch The court system in the Philippines exercises the judicial power of government, and it is made up of a Supreme Court and lower courts created by law. The Supreme Court is a 14-member court appointed by the President without need for confirmation by Congress. This council consists of seven members, which are the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, the Secretary of Justice, a representative from Congress, a representative of the Integrated Bar, a professor of law, a retired member of the Supreme Court, and a representative of the private sector. The Supreme Court of Justice may hear or appeal any cases dealing with the constitutionality of any law, treaty, or decree of the government. Cases for questions, 
of judicial error or concern, or any cases where the penalty is sufficiently grave. It may also exercise original jurisdiction over cases involving government or international officials. And here's Hannah to discuss more about the Article 1 National Territory. Political Law the Philippine Constitution of 1987, Article 1, the National Territory. The National Territory comprises the Philippine Archipelago, with all the islands and water embraced therein, and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty and jurisdiction, consisting of its terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial domains including its territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, and the insular shelves and other submarine areas. The waters are on between and connecting the islands of the archipelago, regardless of their breadth and dimension, form part of internal waters of the Philippines. Territory is defined as the fixed portion on the surface of the earth on which the state settles and over which it has supreme authority. The components of the territory of the state are the terrestrial, fluvial, maritime, and aerial domains. Land territory or terrestrial domain refers to the land mass which may be integrated or dismembered or partly by water or consist of one whole island. It may also be composed of several islands like the Philippines, which is also known as mid-ocean archipelago as distinguished from the coastal archipelagos like Greece. The terrestrial domain includes properties of public domain as well as properties of private ownership. Public dominion includes those for public service and those for the development of national wealth like roads, government building, forest, and mineral lands. Private ownership consists of patrimonial properties of the government, such as lands acquired through street proceedings and those vested individuals, whether owned singly or collectively. Territorial waters are sometimes used informally to refer to any area of water over which the state has jurisdiction. Baseline or internal water. Waters landward of the baseline are defined as internal waters over which the state has complete sovereignty. Territorial sea, as defined by the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea, is a belt of coastal waters extending at most 12 nautical miles. Contiguous zone is a band of water extending farther from the outer edge of the territorial sea up to 24 nautical miles. Exclusive economic zone extends from the baseline to a maximum of 200 nautical miles. Thus, it includes the contiguous zone. Aerial dome. It includes the air directly above the state terrestrial and civil domains, all the way up to where the outer space begins. The International Convention on Civil Aviation holds that every state has complete and exclusive sovereignty over the airspace above its territory. It also regulates flight of civil aircraft over the territory of another state, except by special agreement or otherwise, and in accordance with the terms. Thereof, with the development of modern air navigation, it has been suggested as a better rule to allow innocent passage to a certain height in order to provide freedom of transportation. The Outer Space Theory is an international multilateral agreement that sets forth the fundamental principles governing the international law of outer space. Over 80 states are parties to the Outer Space Treaty. The Department of Tourism, or DOT, is the executive department of the Philippine government responsible for the regulation of the Philippine tourism industry and the promotion of the Philippines as a tourist destination. It is the primary planning, implementing, and regulatory government agency tasked to develop and promote the Philippine tourism industry, both domestic and international. Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat is the current Executive Secretary of the Department that has been appointed by President Rodrigo Duterte in the year of 2018. Its mission, the Department of Tourism shall be the primary government agency in charge with the responsibility to encourage, promote, and develop tourism as a major socio-economic activity to generate foreign currency and employment 
and to spread the benefits of tourism to both the private and the public sector. Here are the different parts of the Department of Tourism and its functions. First is the Office of the Secretary. It provides leadership, direction, and substance to the overall operations of the department. It formulates the policies, plans, programs, rules, and regulations, reviews and evaluates the performance of the Tourism Master Plan, and advises the President on all matters affecting the tourism program of the country. Second is the Tourism Promotion Sector. It has the primary function of promoting the Philippines as a tourist destination domestically and internationally. It devises integrated marketing and promotional activities such as information dissemination, public relations, special events, and related tourism programs. It likewise supervises the overseas field offices established to implement and enhance the tourism development and promotion program of the department in the international field. Third is the Tourism Services and Regional Offices sector. It is tasked to ensure the pleasant entry, stay, and exit of the tourists. It formulates standards of quantity and efficiency for tourism-oriented establishments, among others, done through an accreditation system. Tourist establishments' compliance to policies are monitored to make sure that their facilities and services are operated and maintained according to acceptable international norms. The sector also supervises the OT's regional operations established to implement the policies, plans, programs, and regulations of the department and to maintain the delivery of efficient and effective frontline services for the tourism industry. Fourth is the tourism planning, product development, and coordination sector. It is responsible for the formulation and updating of the tourism master plan together with its component programs. The sector monitors the effective implementation of the tourism master plan and, in coordination with the private sector and other government institutions, it develops and conceptualizes new products and investment opportunities designed to enhance tourist sites and facilities. And lastly is the internal services sector. It ensures the smooth and legal functioning of the operations of the department through the provision of effective and efficient advice and services in the areas of personal management, human resources development, general services administration, computerization and information technology services, budgetary, financial and management services, and including investigatory and advisory services. My topic is all about the history of the OT or also known as Department of Tourism. The OT started as a private initiative to promote the Philippines as a major travel destination. Did you know that the Philippine Tourist and Travel Association was organized in 1950? Well, in 1956, the Board of Travel and Tourist Industry was created by Congress, stipulated in the Integrated Reorganization Plan in 1972. As amended, the Department of Trade and Tourism was established, reorganizing the Department of Commerce and Industry. In 1973, President Ferdinand Marcos created a new cabinet-level Department of Tourism by splitting the Department of Trade and Tourism into two separate departments. Included in the new Department of Tourism is the Agency of Philippine Tourism Authority, or also known as PTA, and the Philippine Convention Bureau, or also known as PCB. The Department of Tourism was then renamed as Ministry of Tourism. In 1986, under executive order signed by President Corazon Aquino, the Department of Tourism was reorganized and correspondingly, the Convention Bureau was renamed as the Philippine Convention and Visitors Corporation. In 2003, the Department of Tourism initiated one of its most successful tourism promotion projects, the WOW Philippines, under Secretary, or should I say now Senator, Richard J. Gordon. The latest improvements in the tourism industry in the country came about with the passage of Republic Act 9593 or the Tourism Act of 2009. So that's all for the history of the Department of Tourism. Now, let's proceed to the National Law of Tourism, the Republic Act number 9593. Let's talk about first the history of this act. Independent Senator Richard J. Gordon, principal author of the Tourism Bill, hailed the ratification by Congress of the measure which aims to boost the country's tourism industry. The measure is a consolidation of Senate Bill 2213 and House Bill 5229 
which was finally passed by the Senate and the House of Representatives on March 5 and March 4, 2009 respectively, and was soon approved by former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo on May 12, 2009. About the Republic Act 9593, this is known as the Tourism Act of 2009 an act declaring a national policy for tourism as an engine of investment, employment, growth, and national development and threatening the Department of Tourism and its attached agency to effectively and efficiently implement that policy and appropriating funds, therefore. The state declares tourism as an indispensable element of the national economy and an industry of national interest and importance, which must be harnessed as an engine of socio-economic growth and cultural affirmation to generate investments, foreign exchange, and employment, and to continue to move an enhanced sense of national pride of all Filipinos. Toward this end, the state shall seek to ensure the development of Philippine tourism that is for by the Filipino people, conserve and promote their heritage, national identity, and sense of unity. Recognize sustainable tourism development as integral to the national socio-economic development efforts to improve the quality of life of the Filipino people, providing the appropriate attention and support for the growth of this industry. Promote a tourism industry that is ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative, culturally sensitive, economically viable, and ethically and socially equitable for local communities. Create a favorable image of the Philippines within the international community, thereby strengthening the country's attraction as a tourism destination and eventually paving the way for other benefits that may result from a positive global view of the country. Develop the country as a prime tourism hub in Asia as well as a center of world congresses and conventions by promoting sustainable tourism anchored principle on the country's history, culture, and national endowments and ensuring the protection, preservation, and promotion of these resources and encourage private sector participation in agritourism for countryside development and preservation of the rural life. In order to support this act for the improvement of the Philippines' tourism competitiveness, the National Tourism Development Plan or NTDP is needed for updated national tourism plans to address the evolving needs and capabilities of the industry. The National Tourism Development Plan 2016-2022 to is a continuation of the National Tourism Development Plan 2011-2016 to formulated in 2010 by the Department of Tourism as mandated by Republic Act 9593 or the Tourism Act of 2009. It was completed with the assistance of Asia-Pacific Projects incorporated in association with Indra Philippines. The vision of developing a highly competitive and environmentally sustainable tourism industry is focused on creating inclusive growth was adapted to provide the long-term implementation framework consistent with the declaration of policy set forth in the Tourism Act of 2009. The responsibility of national and local governments, Republic Act 9593, Section 35, coordination between national and local governments, in the view of the urgent need to develop a national strategy for tourism development while giving due regard to the principle of local autonomy and department of the DIG and LG shall integrate and coordinate local and national plans for tourism development. The department may provide financial and technical assistance, training and other capacity building measure to LGUs for the preparation and implementation and monitoring of their tourism development plans, gathering of statistical and data, and enforcement of tourism laws and regulations giving due priority to areas that have been identified as strategic in the implementation of the National Tourism and Development Plan. LGU shall ensure the implementation of such plans by the Department the TVP and the Central shall prioritize promotion and development assistance for LGUs which successfully adopt and implementation their tourism development plans. Section 44, Tourism Site Classification, the Tourism Council established in the administrative region of the county shall meet on a regular basis to classify and evaluate tourism destination, site, and activities within their respective region. Such classification and evaluation may be used by the department and its attached agencies 
NGOs and the private sector as guide in the development and implementation of their respective programs. Republic Act Number no. 7351, also known as an Act Established ARS Park in Barangay Tuno, Municipality of Calapa Province of Laguna, Approval Date April 2, 1992. Publication date April 9, 1992. Section 1 There shall be established under the supervision of the Department of Tourism, ARS Park in Barangay Tuno, Municipality of Calapa Province, Laguna. Section 2 The Department of Tourism through the Philippines Tourism Authority and in coordination with the other government agencies concerned shall prepare the plans necessary for this purpose and implement the construction of the rest part within one year from the approval of this act. Section 3 This act shall take effect 15 days from its complete publication in the official gazette or in at least two national newspaper of general circulation whichever come in order. Republic of number 7668, also known as an act declaring Mount Samad in the province of Bataan. A to this spot, approval date, January 17, 1994, publication date, April 18, 1994. Section 1 Mount Samad in province of Bataan is hereby declared a tourist spot that will preserve and conserve the natural beauty and historical importance of the place. As such, it shall be accorded priority de development by the Department of Tourism and shall be subject to the rule and the regulation governing the development of tourism. Section 2, the Department of Tourism, in coordination with other government agencies, consent shall prepare within one year from the approval of this act. A tourism development plan involving the construction, installation, and or maintenance of such appropriate facilities and infrastructure as shall encourage tourism in this area. Section 3. The Department of Tourism shall take immediate step to implement said development plan and shall incorporate the same in the Department over all tourism development programs for the ensuing calendar year. Section 4. The Department of Tourism shall issue the if necessary rule and regulation for the proper implementation of this act. Section 5. This act shall take upon its approval. Republic Act No. 7852, also known as an act providing for the improvement and development of the Chocolate Hills Tourist Path in the municipality of Carmen Province of Bohol. Approval date, December 24, 1994. Publication date, February 27, 1995. Section 1, the Chocolate Hills Tourist Path in the municipality of Carmen Province of Bohol shall hereby be improved and development in order to further enhance its tourism attraction and potential. Section 2, the Department of Tourism, in coordination with the Philippine Tourism Authority and other concerned agencies of the government, shall prepare the development plan and construct the appropriate facilities and infrastructure for the area subject to set tourism standard provided that the development plan shall ensure the protection and preservation of the natural beauty and historical significance thereof. Section 3. The Department of Tourism shall take immediate step to implement said development plan and incorporate the same in the Department overall tourism development program for the ensuing calendar year. Section 4. The Department of Tourism shall promulgate such rule and regulation as may be necessary for the effective implementation of this act. Section 5. This act shall take effect immediately upon its approval.